Hi, I'm Tom Law. In my island meditations, I share my thoughts on a passage from the Bible in the hopes that it will invite you to think about what the Bible is saying to you, and maybe even uh, that you would share your thoughts with back to me in the comments below. For the sixth Sunday of Pentecost, we're going to be looking at the gospel reading from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, a very famous quote of Jesus. And uh, to add some background to the understanding of these verses, we're also going to look at what Paul had to say in the epistle reading for this week, albeit very uh, briefly, in Romans chapter 7. If the longs of which I am one have a family business, it is the business of education. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus contrasts two different styles of education. One style tells the six-year-old how to start and push a lawnmower. The teacher informs them about cutting in straight overlapping lines so that the yard looks neat and not a blade of grass is missed. Then they say, go cut the grass and send the child out to hack up the yard and possibly cut off one of their own appendages. <laughs> Jesus says, this is typical of the religious training of his day. He concludes Matthew chapter 23 verses one through four by saying, they tie up heavy burdensome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. The apostle Paul was brought up in this system of religious education, and it brought him to a place of torment. In Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25, Paul describes how he has a head knowledge of what the right thing to do is, but finds himself doing something else. In his words, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. He describes it as a war that he knows what is right and still finds himself compelled to do what he knows to be wrong. In his anguish, he cries out, what a wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Moral teaching is a good thing. We should teach the difference between right and wrong and the critical thinking skills to discern whether we're being misinformed. What it doesn't do is give us a way out of Paul's dilemma, knowing what's right, but doing what's wrong. Now, most of us, even with very little moral training, have found ourselves in the middle of that exact same internal war. So when we come to Jesus' message in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, we understand that Jesus has quite a different educational approach. When my dad wanted to teach me how to mow the lawn, he did a couple of things. First, he got a self-propelled lawnmower so that it wouldn't be too hard for a six-year-old to push. Secondly, with my hands on the mower handle, he stood behind me and pushed with me, helping me to get a feel for how to turn it and plan my routes. He was with me and stopped me when I was about to do something dangerous before I could get hurt. Well, others might send us off with strict moral standards and no tools to put them into practice. Jesus offers a fresh approach. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word translated weary means to be tired from exerting effort. We've been taught what is right, and like Paul, we are wretched from trying to do right and stumbling under that burden. Paul wanted to know who would deliver him. We want to know who will deliver us from this struggle. Jesus invites us to come to him, and the metaphor he uses is to be yoked with him like my dad standing behind me with his strength, experience, skills, and love for me, Jesus paints an image of himself and ourselves sharing a yoke. 
He can give us strength to pull, help us navigate the field before us. He does this gently, not too proud to get his hands dirty, working alongside us. The word translated easy means that the yoke is well fitted to the draft animal that's using it, not causing unnecessary discomfort. Jesus' support is custom made for each one of us, working with us in the power of Almighty God in Jesus Christ. In that sense, the law of love is light compared to moral legalism. We have someone pulling for us, someone pulling with us, guiding us in service and love for God and people. When Jesus invites us to share his yoke and learn of him, the verb translated learn comes from the same root as the noun disciple. This close working relationship with our master is how we learn to be a disciple. How will others know? How will we know that we are his disciples, yoked with him and learning of him? They will know, Jesus says in the Gospel of John, by our love. Let us come to Jesus and let him work in us, with us, and through us to love God with all our hearts, all our souls, all our minds, and all our strength, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Jesus stands before you, before me, with outstretched arms. Will you turn away, or will you come? Mercy that was great and grace was free. Pardon that was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty.